I'm Kate McLennan. I'm Kate McCartney. We're in the best form of our lives. We're running out of ideas. Welcome to the catering show. Fuck my name. The, the catering show finale. I am phoning it in. And our last episode is a touching tribute to our friendship because this season has been such a joy, hasn't it, McCartney? Oh, look, it's um. But it's not all fun and game. Today we're using our position as attractive TV chefs and trained actors to tell you how to live. Again. This episode is all about the food waste movement, where we combat environmental oblivion with cooking. Which is kind of like fighting ISIS with mice. Mices. It's the end of the series. And of the planet. Come celebrate with us. <laughs> We're blowing a fuse. Oh no, we can't do the episode. Well, what do we do now? I can do an animal husbandry course. You can get very involved in community theatre. Can you take this seriously, please? McCartney. McCartney. The food waste movement isn't just a very impressive way of saying wheeze and poos. It's also about people buying odd-shaped produce like bananas that look like vaginas. Or using daikon that they have not used to regrow more daikon that they will not use. So today we're not making, as I would have liked, a fantastic technique-driven molecular gastronomy feast. Nor are we making, as I suggested, a clip show. Instead, we're avoiding environmental cataclysm by ending the whole series cooking with leftovers to make the only meal that you can make with leftovers Overs, bubble and squeak. I'm so bored. Bubble and squeak might look and taste like regurgitated cat sick, but I'm going to give ours a little Katie Mac twist, a bubble and tweak, if you will. Ours is going to be filled with precious memories from season two as a special gift for my dear friend McCartney. Yeah, it's going to be like a handmade massage voucher that you give a colleague because you can't afford a proper present. And I've told you, you can redeem that voucher as soon as my repetitive wrist injury clears up from that other voucher that I gave my partner in lieu of a mortgage repayment. We're going to put some bubble in our recipe with eggs from our Red Ramen, Red Ramen episode. Carrots from McLennan's Plasagna. Gruyere stumps from It Gets Feta. Half a bottle of wine left over from the wedding episode. Yes, left over. Cavallonero spines. Kale, it's called kale. You've got to roll the R, so... Cavallonero. Cavallonero. Spring onion tops from the episode with my best friend, Ronnie Cheng. And finally, the potatoes from our playful episode with the politician who sent that pregnant asylum seeker back to Nauru. Oh, what a great guy. A real family man. <laughs> oh, I'm going to miss all this. Season three can't come soon enough. <laughs> it really can't. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with myself after this. <laughs> I've nothing planned. Right, so first up, I'm going to chop up these spring onions that I've been regrowing for three weeks. And while I do that, McCartney, make yourself useful by grating our carrot stumps. <laughs> All right, so we'll just take those out of the water. Just the wrong side, you just need to keep turning. Just keep turning. Now, if you're growing these at home, you will need to change the water every... Just keep turning, keep, keep turning. Because your house will start to smell like a weeping sore if you don't. Just keep, keep turning, keep, keep turning. Keep, keep round, just keep going round, yep. Just keep, keep going, just that one, yes. So you need to peel them first. But I think it's worth it for how small they are. Yeah, they're also a really great way for McLennan to offset her third fridge. I do lots of things to carbon neutralise, actually. McCartney, what do you do to reduce waste in your kitchen? I just eat toast. Great. Well, we'll be sure to put that hot tip on our website. Up, we just need to chop our cavallonero spines. 
gosh. Looking at all these ingredients really reminds me of all the great things that I've cooked throughout the series. The ramen episode where I made ramen. Episode 5 where I made a goat. That was a sheep. McCartney, what's been your favourite memory of season 2? Um, I like the bit in River Monsters where Jeremy catches the fish. I meant the catering show. Oh, my answer remains the same. So now I'm going to bind all of these ingredients with some leftover wine and eggs. Now, McCartney, you're not doing anything. Do you want to get the leftover eggs out of the fridge for me? Where are they? They're in the fridge. OK. I'm also going to fry up the bubble and tweak in this almond oil, which is left over from my birth plan. What do they look like? Eggs. They look like eggs. They're in a bowl. I had it left over because I was going to use it in my labour because I had some pretty unrealistic expectations about my pain threshold. I can't see them. They're right in front of you. Here. There. You said they were in a bowl. This is a large ramekin. So now I'm going to crack open the eggs. And McCartney, while I'm doing that, do you want to get out of my kitchen? Yep. <laughs> and go do the booze reviews. Oh. You can actually keep eggshells. Um, you can put them around plants to stop the snails from getting into them. It's quite nifty. You can also blend them up into a powder and put them in your shoes to soak up excess fluid if you've got fluid retentive ankles, which I don't. What's going on here? Hmm? I thought you were reviewing the limoncello that I made from the leftover lemons. No, I decided to do nothing. Well, how does that fit the brief? Well, nothing makes zero waste. But that's not really in the spirit of... Look, all you had to do was try the drink and then just do your little dead eyes at camera. Do you want to do this bit too? No. No, this is your thing. Yes, yeah, so stop micromanaging me. Fine, I will. Not. I'm going to get this stumpy tail lizard. Oh, it's Steve. It's true, environmentalism is confusing and shit boring. But you know what? In this world there are doers who recycle and have really tried to make moon cups work for them despite having a sort of oblong shaped cavity. Then there are lazy people with see-through skin and, and frankly not a lot of on-screen charisma whose fault this will all be when their careers, much like the polar bears, go up in flames. So we've reached the end of season two of The Catering Show. What's your problem? Oh, nothing. No, I'm just wrapping up the last episode of our show. Good one. OK, so McCartney, should we taste test the bubble and tweak <laughs> that's filled with precious memories from season two? And doesn't it look so special? Let's eat. Here's to the future of the planet, this show and us. Is that cheese? Yes, it's goat's cheese from the goat in the Maggie Beer episode. That was a sheep. <laughs> I grew up in the country. I think I know the difference between a sheep and a goat and that sheep was definitely a goat. Have you not been paying attention to me at all this season? I can't eat dairy. Fine, fine. I'll just put it all in the bloody bin then. Do you have any idea of how much work I put into this show for you and I? You know, this whole thing is about me cooking beneath my skill set to try and just cater to your bullshit intolerances. You know what? I didn't even want to cook that meal. You know, the only reason I cooked it is because you like nature and animals and shit like that. This isn't about me. You don't even include me. And you know what? Don't pretend to be interested in what I like. You don't give a shit. I'm just a live prop for your fucking Gondwana-sized ego. My head is not that big. It's just that my eyes are very small. You know what, sometimes it is just nice to do something nice for someone else without being asked, Kate. Oh, really, Kate? Yes, like, I don't know, looking up from your phone when I'm telling you about my day or, I don't know, doing the fucking dishes once in a while. Oh, my God, if you want me to do the dishes, I will do the dishes and then I might go back to tape. Fine, fine. Well, I'm just going to eat this goat's cheese because I fucking can. Oh, it was a fucking sheep. Oh, shit, hang on, hang on. Oh, hang on. it's hang really on. bleeding. Oh, mate, it's okay, it's all right. Just hold oh. on to that. I'll get you a band aid. Hang on, hang on. Oh.
All right, it's okay, it's okay. We'll put a band-aid on it. Oh, all right, it's, it's really right. deep. I know, I know, here. Okay, it's all right, here. Which finger is it? This one. Okay, all right, right. It's gonna be a bit of a sting, bit of a sting. All right, there we go, there we go. There we go, it's okay, it's okay. You're right. You're right, it's okay. Thanks. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right, are you all right? Yeah. yeah I'm all right. It's been a long series. Yeah. Yeah, it has. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry too. I love you. I love you too. Um, um, go back to here. We'll, yeah, we'll, probably, we'll, we'll go back to the, go back to the top. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is that, yeah, is that okay? It's, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's all right. Okay. okay. I'll just um, just pop that there. I'll be out. Yeah. You. Yeah. Okay. All right. Actually, you, oh. st start start in start start in. So, we've reached the end of season two of The Catering Show. Bearded dragons, bearded dragons, bearded dragons. Oh my God! <laughs> they got some little turtles. McLennan, look, little turtles. Turtles have got this little cloaca, which is like an all-in-one hole. They can poop out of it, they can sex out of it. It's very good value for money, hole-wise. What are we looking for? Stumpy tail. It's also called a bob tail or a shingle back. What is? A stumpy tail. I thought you said it was called a stumpy tail. Yeah, no, it is. Hey, maybe our next show should be about animals. Where are you going? I just have to, um, internet. So I'm just gonna, um, um. <laughs>